All right, everybody, welcome back to my kitchen today for a recipe video. I'm really excited to be sharing this with you because this is something I've been wanting to make for a really long time, actually. I was reading about pemmican, how it's made and how it's been used traditionally when I was on my first round of carnivore, but I never got to making it during that time. And so that's kind of been on my list of things to experiment with. And when I started making my own ground beef jerky at home, that's when I realized I think I have everything I need now to go for this pemmican bar recipe. So that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you today. And I want to make this video as informative as possible. And so I'm gonna include a lot of information here about, you know, of course, how I made the bars, how you can make them completely from scratch. And I also wanna share some numbers and math with you so that you can actually tailor this recipe to the specific ratios that you're looking for on your carnivore diet, ketovore diet, whatever version of the proper human diet that you're on right now. I'm personally looking for a high fat approach. So I really wanted something that was at least 80-20 so that this pemmican bar can serve as a quick grab and go food that I've kind of always got on hand. That is also something I know is at the macro ratio that I'm trying to get. So whether you're like me and you're wanting a higher fat version of this recipe or you're looking for something leaner, I want to try to lay everything out so that you'll leave this video knowing exactly how to tweak this so that you're getting the ratios that match your own personal goals. And then I'm also going to do a cost breakdown at the end because that's kind of really where the fun part comes in is how much money you can save by making this stuff at home. I think it's really beneficial. It's actually fun to do. You can start getting the kids involved in making some of these foods at home. And then of course you can control the ingredients and the quality that you're putting in here. So again, I'm gonna be offering different options as we go through the video and you can choose the options that you think will work best for you and your family. But cost wise, I've figured out that you can make these pemmican bars for the carnivore diet at home for as low as $1 and 17 cents is what it worked out to be specifically per bar. So a dollar each is a really good price and I think it's worth putting in some extra time to create these at home. Let's start by talking about what you're gonna need and how much. So we'll go over a list of the ingredients and appliances that you'll need to make this recipe and then how much, depending on what macros that you're shooting for. So because this is a carnivore recipe, I'm not gonna be including honey or fruit or seasonings, anything like that today, but you wanna add um, a spice mixture or some dried fruit or even a little bit of honey or a combination of all of the above, you can definitely do that and experiment. I might make some with added things for my kiddo in case she likes that better. Um, but I'm gonna keep these plain today for the carnivores out there who just want kind of this base recipe. And then obviously you can feel free to add whatever suits your lifestyle currently. So that being said, what do we really need for this? We need tallow is one part and a ground beef powder, or you could use venison or elk or bison or anything like that, right? Any ruminant meat is what would have been hunted and typically used for this in the past. And so it's really only two ingredients. And then I'm gonna add salt as well to mine today. What I did, because I happened to score a five pound bag of free fat trimmings from my local grocery store, I rendered that down into the tallow that I'm gonna be using today. So if you're gonna go that route, starting from fat, raw fat trimmings, then you're gonna need a crock pot or do this on a stove, but you're gonna need a way to render down your raw fat until it becomes tallow. And then for the meat side of this, you're going to need whatever meat source that you are wanting to use. Today I used ground beef and I actually used fatty ground beef just because that's what I had on hand and I didn't wanna go all the way out to store to purchase some lean just for this recipe, but I'm gonna talk about the caveats of that and why I'm probably going to only use lean cuts in the future, but it did work out. And so you can use a fattier ground beef if that's something you have. And then so some way to dehydrate that meat is what you'll need. I used my Nesco five tray food dehydrator, but also do this in the oven. Traditionally, this would have been done either in the sun or perhaps over a, like smoking over a fire or something like that. So I guess if you wanna get really old school, you could do that. Mm -hmm. 
And then you'll need some way to, once your meat is dehydrated fully, to grind this down. So anything from a mortar and pestle, which I have, but I did not use for this recipe today, all the way up to a food processor or something that can grind this down into as close to powder form as you can get. And then lastly, you'll need some kind of container that has little walls or sides that come up on it to pour all this into and let it set. So I, the best thing I had on hand was a large cookie sheet. I think this is 11 by 17 or 11 by 18 inch cookie sheet. And that provided me with about 16 portions. So that's what I've divided this recipe up into to give you all the macros and the calories and the ratios, which you're gonna get to in a little bit. But you could use um, silicone muffin tins, which is probably what I'm gonna use next time. You could use um, a nine by 13 pan, like a little brownie pan, something like that. You could come up with all different fun ways to portion this out, but just having something like that on hand when, it, when the time comes to put it all together is the last thing that you'll need. So how much of these ingredients do you need to get the appropriate ratio that you're shooting for? I started out just with using the amount of beef that I had on hand, and that was a completely random measurement of 22 ounces. And this was also fatty ground beef. Ideally, you would wanna use the leanest meat that you can, because it's gonna shorten your dehydration time, and you're probably going to get a better ratio as far as what you get protein wise out of this from a lean cut, right? Because the fat's already been removed and you know we've got water content regardless that's gonna be coming out of here. But I mine dripped a lot of fat down into the dehydrator when I was doing this, but I just took that fat out as it was rendering and actually used it to add to the tallow portion of it. So I didn't end up really losing anything, but I think it took a lot longer to dehydrate than it would have if I would have used a really lean cut of meat. So I started with 22 ounces of 73% ground beef. And I put that in my dehydrator. I roll it out as flat as I can, and it filled up about two trays. And that was in my dehydrator for about 10 hours at 160 the first day. And then it got time to go to bed that night and I didn't want to leave it on overnight without being able to check it. So I just let it sit in there. And then the next day I did about 90 more minutes just to really try to get it a little bit crispier. And then I decided to grind it and see where I was at, how it was feeling. If it seemed really wet yet, I was going to put it back in the dehydrator, but it actually came out looking and tasting really good. So after I ground everything down as fine as I could get it in this little mini food processor chopper thingy, um, I was left with about 7.4 ounces of finished product. And here I've converted everything to grams because it's just gonna be easier going forward to compare grams to grams to get this really precise. That equals just over 209 grams of the ground beef grind, <laughs> the ground ground beef powder. So that's my first component, right? I have 209 grams of beef. So how much tallow do I need to get to 80-20? In the beginning, I calculated this with 80%. I did it 80-20 with grams instead of calories because I kind of, a lot of times I just forget about calories because I never count them intentionally. But really that's what you would be shooting for if you're trying to create it this way. 80% of the calories coming from fat and 20% of the calories coming from protein. So knowing that I have 209 grams of my protein and one gram of protein is four calories, I'm gonna multiply 209 by four to get a total of 836 calories. So the next thing we wanna know is, okay, we've got 836 calories from protein and we know that that number needs to be 20% of our total number of calories for this entire bar. And once we figure out that, then we'll know the number of calories from fat that we need and we'll divide that number by nine, which is the number of calories per gram for fat. And that will tell us how many grams of tallow we need for this ratio. So bear with me, I'll put this up on the screen here too. So we put 836 equal to 20% of X, right? So eight, 836 is 20% of what number? So we'll multiply both sides by 100, divide by 20 to solve for X, and that gives us 4,180 
which is the total number of calories that we need for the entire recipe. And you can check that by taking the number 4180 times 20% and that gives you 836. So we know our protein number is correct. So now we know the number of total calories we need, 4180. So we can just subtract the calories from protein, which was 836, and that gives us 3,344 calories needed from our fat component. So we know that fat per gram has about nine calories, and so we'll just divide 3344 by nine, and that gives us a result of 371.5 grams of fat. So this is the way that I would really recommend doing it is starting with your meat component and dehydrating it first and then seeing what it weighs and how much it is because otherwise it's, it's just gonna be really hard to know how much you're gonna be left over with once you dehydrate that product, you know, depending on how much fat or water is in it. So that's what I did. I started with my beef and figured out after that dehydrating process how much I had. But then at the same time on the side, I was rendering down a crock pot full of fat trimmings and just kind of seeing how much tallow I got out of that. And I had also some in the fridge that I just collect in a jar. But just quickly to render tallow, um, I've been using the wet method lately, which is work has worked really well for me. So I just filled up the crock pot with these fat trimmings and added enough water to, you know, basically fill the entire crock pot. And I added maybe five or six tablespoons of salt to that. And then I just put it on high until it came up to temperature and let that simmer for as long as it needed till I felt like all or as much of the fat was rendered out as I could get. And if I remember correctly, that took about 16 hours. I let it go on high for about the first 12 hours on the first day. Then I turned it to low overnight just so it wouldn't overcook or and nothing would burn while I wasn't able to stir it. And then the following day, I turned it off, let it cool. And then all I did was just strain all of the liquid. So that's the liquid fat and the water is mixed together at that point into some bowls, put those bowls in the refrigerator and the fat solidifies, leaving the water behind. So then once that's solid, you can just kind of score it or cut through it with a knife and pull out your rendered tallow. Now, obviously it's important to try to get all of the water that you can out of this. The more water-free this product is, the better shelf life it's gonna have and the less chance it has of you know, going rancid or growing any bacteria or anything like that. So this is a product you could make for long-term food storage, which I'm getting ready to do a video about my kind of carnivore prepper pantry, the things that I'm putting away for long-term or emergency food storage. So this is gonna be a part of that. Um, so obviously if you're doing this with the intention of making it shelf stable, you wanna make sure that you eliminate all of the water from this. And then at this point, all that's left is to put it together and let it set in your desired pan. And at this point, you can add a little bit of salt if you want, or you could add in your seasoning mix. I would probably mix in the seasonings with the ground meat and get that nice and incorporated before putting everything together. You could add a little bit of honey. I actually pulled out like about two servings and added a little bit of honey to make those into the ones for my little one, and she actually liked them so far. So that's encouraging. You want to do this with your tallow melted in, in liquid form. So I just put a little pot on the stove and then I took my bowl of hardened tallow where I had measured out the amount of grams that I needed, dumped that in the pot and just let it come to liquid form again. And then I used this big cookie sheet, which I probably won't do again. It made really nice bars, but it was hard with the amount that I had to get it really even. And that's the other caveat with the high fat ratio here is that you're going to have a lot more, you know, a much bigger layer of fat than maybe would have traditionally been done with this. I've seen a lot of um, posts on how to make this that are more of like a one-to-one -one ratio. So you just pour in enough tallow until the meat part of it is saturated and then you let that set. 
So because I want the high fat ratio, you know, it was maybe a little bit more tricky to get it even. I'm keeping them in the freezer because that's the way that I've been enjoying them best. I like them when they're really cold. It's got that crunchy texture from the beef powder, but it's also like that snap when you bite into that tallow side. It's just really, really good. And so I've been keeping them in the freezer and then it's a perfect little, hey, I'm kind of hungry, but I don't have time to cook a meal right now. Um, or right before bed, I'll eat, I'll go look for some of the fattiest pieces and put those in my mouth. It's just a really nice way to quick grab something that you know is in alignment with your plan and it tastes great, especially straight out of the freezer. Well, let's talk about cost. Right, because I love breaking down the cost of things and seeing how much money I can save by doing some things and making some things at home. So at the end of the day, the cost for this could vary significantly though, because there's so many different prices on meat and tallow. And so I kind of struggled to actually put a price on what I'm doing since I actually got my tallow for free this time, which isn't always gonna be the case. So what I did was I got the prices for uh, a Wagyu beef tallow that I see on some other carnivores videos that seems to be pretty popular and it's easily available on Amazon. So this would be a way to do it without that rendering process that I went through. You could just buy this tallow online and use it and measure it out to exactly what you need. So I'll put a picture of it here. And right now at the time of filming this, it is going for $29.99 and that is 1.19 kilograms, which is 1,119 grams. So anyway, it works out to about three cents per gram price for that tallow. And in this recipe, let's say we were using that one, for example, we used 371.5 grams of tallow. So that will come out to $11.15 for the tallow portion of this recipe if you were to use this specific one here. For the protein side, again, this is gonna vary significantly depending on if you choose to use conventionally raised meat like I did this time, or if you choose grass-fed, grass-finished meat, and how lean that is and what price you can get it for. So I just tried to find a middle of the road ballpark number just to give you an idea. And then hopefully from looking at this information, you can figure out how you could price out whatever you choose to buy to see how much money you're saving versus buying some pre-made bars. So I chose to use $6.99 a pound for just kind of an average ballpark number. From my beef jerky video, I know that it was about a 55% reduction in weight from the raw product that I started with to the finished product of beef jerky. So I used that number to estimate the number of grams of lean beef that you would need at $6.99 a pound to make the recipe that we made today. And that number is 380 grams is what you would need to start with. And so at 699 per pound, one pound is 454 grams. And so that works out to about two cents per gram times 380 grams, again, approximately that you would need to start with equals $7.60 for the meat portion of this. Now, obviously, if you're adding any extra ingredients, you would add in the cost of those as well. But that comes out to $18.75 for this entire batch of 80-20 carnivore pemmican bars. And I divided mine into 16 portions. So if you divide 18.75 by 16, each bar comes out to $1.17. Is that not amazing? That's so incredibly cheap. And like I said, if you want to use grass fed beef here, I mean, I don't think it would go up that much. I mean, even if it was five bucks a bar, that's still a really good deal in my opinion. And it's a great high quality, high fat meal, essentially replacement that you could use when you're busy, when you're traveling, when your kid's sick and you don't have time to cook yourself uh, the meal that you normally would these can really come in handy. Each of the 16 bars has about 261 calories, 23 grams of fat, and 13 grams of protein. Okay, I think I covered it all. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. If you have any questions about, you know, how to figure out these macros still that I didn't answer throughout the video, let me know in the comments. Let me know if you make this. I think, again, this is 
This is one I'm really excited about making um, into the future and trying out different variations for my kid. Thank you all for watching and hanging out with me today in the kitchen. And I look forward to seeing you again for another video soon. Take care.